Yo YouTube, what's up? It's your boy Kari here. Back again with another video for you guys. Today I'm gonna to talk about five of the most common scams here in Medellin that you need to be on the lookout for. And my hope is that today's video will save you or somebody time, money, or their life. All right, so for that reason, I think it's important that if you're planning on coming to Medellin that you tune in and listen closely to this video so that you don't get scammed, all right? So let's get into it. First off, I'd like to say that I'm gonna save the most common scam for last, so I'm gonna kind of work my way up the ladder um, as we work through this list of common scams in Medellin. So be aware that uh, towards the end will be the, the most common in my opinion, all right? Let me start off this list with the taxi scam. So this one has been talked about online, on YouTube before, and it's pretty well known, but there are taxis out here in Medellin that try to charge more than what they should. How do they do that? There's a few different ways. Some of them, they won't even use their meter. So every taxi cab in Medellin should have a meter that counts the, the distance that you're going and converts it into how much you should be paying. All right, so some taxis in Medellin will try to act like they forgot to turn that on. Uh, if they see that you're a gringo, they might let you get in the car and start driving and then maybe you've already been in the car for five minutes and you ask them about the meter and now you just gotta negotiate a price with them. So they'll just throw out whatever they want to charge for that ride, okay? And it's kinda leaves you with really no other option other than to pay for what they want or to negotiate with them. So it's happened to me. And luckily, you know, I was aware of what I should be paying and the taxi, you know, probably could tell that I wasn't fresh meat out here. So uh, he didn't charge me super anything too crazy, but they will try that. So if you get into a cab in Medellin, look for that meter, make sure you see that it's on and it's running. Um, sometimes cabs will try to turn their meter off and then from the jump, they'll try to uh, negotiate a price with you. That I could respect because you know, they're not letting you get in the car and they're not deceiving you. Yeah, they want to charge you more than what they should, but you know, they're giving you an opportunity to say yay or nay, right? And to negotiate a price. So you'll see that happen uh, definitely around Parque Jettas at night um, or Provenza. There's always cabs lined up waiting to take advantage of people, charge them double, triple, quadruple what they should be paying for their ride. So the taxi cab scams is definitely up there on the list and one of the most popular here in Medellin. So yeah, be on the lookout for that. So the next item on the list is gonna be the Airbnb scams. Now, I hate to use Airbnb as the uh, poster child for this, but the reason I, it's not really the Airbnb as a platform scams people, is people in Medellin that post ads, usually not even on Airbnb, usually on Facebook, actually, or, you know, I've even heard of people that still use Craigslist. I don't know who still uses Craigslist, but some guy on Facebook was talking about he got scammed on Craigslist through a scam like this. But basically, what people do is they set up a post on Facebook, let's say, they post pictures of it, what looks like a nice Airbnb, right? They post the price, they post, you know, the amenities. Oh, it has, you know, fast Wi-Fi, washer and dryer, everything you need. And then the price is, let's say, four million, okay? So somebody might, you know, respond to this ad on Facebook and they might send the money for the house or for the rental right and that's when the person that put the ad up just goes blank doesn't respond deletes everything pretty much fades to black so this scam has been growing in popularity as more and more tourists come here looking for short-term accommodations it makes it really easy to kind of always look for new people or keep posting those ads in hopes that new people will click on them and respond to them because there's always new people coming here. So for a scammer, it's almost like the perfect setup because you have people that are coming that are unsuspecting and don't know the scam yet, all right? So one thing that scammers always need is a fresh crop of new people that don't know the scam that they're about to do yet. Because if everybody knew, then you wouldn't be able to get over on people, right? So just be careful whenever you are selecting air, uh, accommodations, Airbnbs and stuff like that 
on platforms that are not Airbnb, like Facebook and all these Medellin groups and stuff like that. Just be aware that you need to pull up or have somebody pull up to the apartment to make sure that's an actual real place. Cause I heard of people, you know, sending their money for these apartments and then they show up and it's like a, a warehouse. It's not even, a, you know, somewhere where you could live at. So at least do a Google Maps check or something to confirm, you know, that this is even a residence. And then on top of that, I don't recommend sending money to anybody that you don't have a contract with or, you know, some type of official agreement with that you haven't, you know, met in person or these types of things. So a lot of people are trying to handle their accommodations completely before they get here. And that can make you liable to fall into one of these scams. So guys, be careful when it comes to making your accommodations. I do recommend Airbnb, although I've heard people doing this scam on Airbnb, collecting the money, taking it out, and then, you know, by the time you show up to the place, it's no longer there or it was never there in the first place, and the people have deleted their account on Airbnb. That is a little bit harder to do it on Airbnb, I would think, but definitely on Facebook, I know for a fact that this is happening a lot. Okay, so we've gone through two items on the list. Let's get into the third. So the third item on the list is going to be emotional extortion scams. So these are like the love scams that you've heard of. A lot of people are in, in the news, you know, they always talk about Africans doing these scams where, you know, they find a rich lady in North America and, you know, they chat them up and, you know, make them fall in love and then start asking for money. There was even a guy that did this all over Europe and they made a Netflix about him. Um, but they're basically emotional love scams, right? So you find people online that are looking for love. Now this can happen to you guys if you're not even in Colombia. So this happens to a lot of dudes that are coming to Colombia frequently but don't live here. And so they wanna have somebody to talk to or feel like they have a girlfriend or someone's waiting on them. So they seek out company on like a dating website. And so they might be talking to somebody, but of course they don't know who it is. It more than likely is some dude out here in the, in the hood, you know, just chatting you up. And so sometimes they'll have their homegirl answer the FaceTime call or whatever, or stuff like that, you know, so it's, it's a big scam. And so eventually they'll start asking for money. Eventually, they will start um, telling you situations that they're having that are not good, eventually to get money from you, right? And then when you get here, they might try something even more brazen. So guys, be careful when you're talking to people online, meeting people online. Just having a FaceTime call with them is not enough anymore. You need to know somebody that knows this person uh, that, that has your best interests at heart. Like, for example, like meeting girls at the mall. Okay, you know where that girl works at. So the chances of her scamming you or doing something weird to you is very low because you actually met her in person. You have a connection to where she works at, right? So guys, try to meet girls that you have some type of connection with, some type of mutual friend or something there that can um, kind of be like a buffer so that she knows that, hey, if I take advantage of this guy, then my friend that knows both of us is gonna kind of come in and intervene. So anyway, be careful meeting people online. Be careful doing the whole online dating thing. Out here in Medellin, it's very predatory. It's very predatory. Um, I always tell guys, meet women in person. It's always gonna turn out better for you. All right, so let's get into number four on the list, guys, moving right along. So the number four item on the list is going to be police roadblocks and or extortion uh, situations. Basically what I'm talking about is anytime that the police try to stop someone and extort money out of them. So they do it in roadblocks sometimes. Sometimes they might see a situation that they could exploit and take advantage of and they just pop out of the bushes or pull up on the motorcycle, you know, and, you know, tell you a whole bunch of BS about, you know, how they're gonna communicate with migration and tell you that you won't be able to um, come back to Colombia because they're gonna report you to migration for smoking weed and this type of thing. And like it happened to me, I was with my friends, they were smoking weed and a cop pulled up you know, and so the cop starts talking to everybody, but the cop starts getting super mad, like, 
you can't disrespect the country like this. You guys just come here and abuse the country. I'm like, dude, motherfuckers are smoking crack on, on side the freeway. Like, what do you mean we are disrespecting the country? Like, smoking some weed on the street is not disrespectful. Even in my country, that's not disrespectful. So you, you know, he was obviously just like blowing it up to, to, to scare me and my friends, right? Because he figures like the bigger deal he makes it, the more he can scare us, the more we're likely to pay him money. Yeah, this types of things happen a lot, right? And then, so they'll, they'll do this whole big show like, oh, we're, we gotta report you to migration, you gringos this, you gringos that, or, you know, it could be a whole bunch of different uh, stories that they go with, you know, the cops are very creative nowadays. But in the end of it all, they just want money most of the time. And, you know, my opinion on this is that you should try to calm the situation down and uh, tell the cop, you know, like you're not trying to disrespect the country, you know, in, in your country, you know, it's not like this. And so, you know, with all due respect, that wasn't your intention type of thing. Uh, you have the utmost respect for Colombia. You want to be able to return. Um, and more than likely, they're going to keep giving you a hard time until you give them a little bit of cash. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. You know, I won't speak too much on that, but it's something to look out for. It can happen, like I said, in a roadblock. It can happen with the cops just pulling up on you or a traffic stop or anything. You know, anytime that you encounter the cops where they stop you and you're not like sometimes I go up to the cops just to ask them a question, you know, but. If they're coming, approaching you, then they're probably gonna hit you with some extortion, scam, or some type of BS. So be on the lookout for that um, here in Medellin. Okay, now we've arrived at number five or number one, whatever. It's the most important, the most common scam, in my opinion, here in Medellin. It's one, it doesn't come as a surprise, guys. It's gonna be the scopolamine drugging and robbing, right? Here in Medellin, we have a big problem now in terms of scamming, uh, in terms of poisoning, all right? It's grown in popularity. I start seeing more and more news stories about this every single year, it seems like. But yeah, Medellin has become the epicenter for drugging and robbing um, unsuspecting tourists or gringos, you know? So how does this work? You know, you solicit a girl on Tinder, you know, thinking she's regular, maybe even on Facebook or whatever, Colombian Cupid or whatever, right? And, you know, you meet up with this girl, you know, y'all been chatting a little bit, you meet up uh, just to hopefully hang out, maybe have a drink at your place, right? You know what you really want, but let's just say having a drink at your place, right? And so the girl comes over, you know, she starts pouring up drinks and next thing you know, you thought you was about to get some head and you just woke up two days later and all your shit's gone. What, what are they doing? They're putting some drug called scopolamine. I'm sure most of you guys have heard about it. They're putting that in your drink or maybe they're blowing it on you. I don't know exactly their methods, but it'll make you pass out for a long time, enough time so that they can take your laptops, computers, phones, anything of value that you have in your apartment, or <clears throat> right? So. This is the number one scam in Medellin for sure. And what can you do to avoid this? For one, stay off of Tinder. For me, you gotta just delete Tinder if you're out here. It's just not a good idea. My belief is that anything on Tinder that you're gonna find, it's a reason why they're on Tinder, right? Any girl that's fine as hell and has a good head on her shoulders is not gonna be looking in Tinder for no dude. At least that's my opinion. So yeah, I know 99% of dudes on Tinder have good intentions and whatnot. They're usually just looking to meet a girl, a nice girl, get to know that girl, um, nothing malicious. Some dudes are just looking for sex and whatnot, but guys, just be careful uh, with that whole Tinder thing. If you haven't heard it before, it's not the same Tinder that you're using in Europe or United States. It's a different world out here, plain and simple. But I'm gonna wrap this video up right here. Like I said, I hope I'm able to help somebody and I hope these, you know, scams, being aware of them is useful for you guys. Hit me up on Instagram at kari.hq if you're interested in a consultation and follow me on Instagram, like my shit for show. Thanks for watching, peace.